What's up guys and gals and welcome back to the Nerd Castle. Today in the world of indie games, we're going to be diving back on into Zero Seaver. This is the Dot 22 branch. Uh, after we covered the game last time, about eight months ago, the developer actually gave me a copy of the Steam branch, which he's updating in development. And so I figured we'd do our normal thing, where every six months I take a look back at the game. If you've never seen Zero Sievert before, this is actually a really, really easy game to define. Uh, if you've played Escape from Tarkov, it's effectively a top-down version of that game, uh, mixed with a little bit of Stalker on in there, in that there's like ghouls and anomalies and things that are not necessarily military tactical involved in it as well. Along the way, you're character is going to level up. There are RPG mechanics, there's gun modding, there's base building. Uh, it's all procedural. The levels are entirely procedural. You never know quite what you're going to get out of any foray into the zone. And I found that it's one of the games that I think I'm probably looking forward to the most. So anyways, today we're going to dive on in. This game's going to be available later on in the year. I think it's also available to people that back the Kickstarter. I don't know if that Kickstarter is still open. You'd have to Google it and check real fast. But I'll have a link for you to the Steam down below so that you can wishlist it if it looks promising to you. And then on top of that, you can also take a look down there to find my Discord and my Twitch stream. Uh, because last time we went with a fresh playthrough, this time around, I've actually gotten a little bit further on into the game. Uh, we're about three and a half hours on in so that I can show you some gameplay that's a little bit further on in because I figured you might appreciate that after, like, you know, the last video started off straight from the beginning. Uh, so here we are inside the confines of Zero Sievert. Zero Sievert is the code name of basically a bunker base that's owned by the Green Army in the middle of the, like, Ukrainian, like, Chernobyl fallout zone or whatever. Uh, this is the area where we're allowed to build our base inside this little bunker. You'll find vendors, uh, you'll find quest givers, you will find people that can sell you gun parts and bullets and all that kind of stuff. And this is basically where the storyline is going to unfold through you doing quests for people and completing things. You'll get little snippets of information about what's going on inside of the zone. The UI is pretty easy to pick up on. All you need to know about is HP. Pretty self-explanatory. It goes down to zero and you explode into a big pool of spaghetti blood and die. Underneath that, you've got your stamina. That's how long you can sprint for. Up here, you've got your energy, and so that's how well-rested you are. Your character does need to sleep from time to time. On top of that, you've also got your hunger. Uh, so this is how much food you've eaten recently. You want everything to be green, ideally. And then you've got your water over here, and then you've got how irradiated you are. And of course, green is good on all of these. At the moment, we do need a little bit of water, I guess. So I can look inside my stash box. As you can tell, I've been storing up random items and things that I've been finding all throughout the hinterland. Uh, none of them are immediately useful, like right this second. I'm kind of collecting this and that at the moment. Uh, they added item rotation since the last time we played the game. Last time we played the game, you couldn't rotate items. I think they just stayed like horizontal or vertical if that's how they were uh, previously. Now it's not that big of a problem. I've actually got to organize my inventory a little bit. I just got a brand new slot that I can put things inside of, and I'm actually pretty husky and excited about it. So there we go. We'll just click all that stuff on in there. Not that important for the context of the video, but like... I gotta clean out my inventory anyways. Uh, at the moment, I am equipped with various weapons. I've got a SKS, a Simonov carbine, uh, that I've been using as my main weapon. It's got a little bit of like an EOTech sight on it that I put on it, and then I also installed a 20 round Tapco mag. There are other things you can put on top of this. You can put like a grip on it that'll allow you to mount like a laser, or you know, other like supplementary stuff if you want to. I've got this AKM down here. Uh, this AKM is utterly unimportant. It has nothing to do with what I'm doing right now. It's just loot that's left over from my last foray out into the zone. And so anyways, let's go get our feet wet, shall we? At the moment, I think I have a couple of quests. Uh, yeah, I've got some quests around, and so apparently I have already retrieved a valuable item. Okay, uh, let me turn in my quests real fast, and once I've turned in the quests, uh, we can come back, but it looks to me like I need some scrap ammo, looks to me like I need some pipes, it uh, looks like I need to kill some ghouls, and it looks like I need to murder some random old man because the green army said that they'll totally be my friend if I do it. I'm feeling sort of morally and ethically dubious about that prospect, that old guy never bothered me. But the uh, Green Army seems to feel otherwise. They, they, they feel very, very strongly that he needs to you. So maybe I'll do that. I don't know. Alright, so having picked up a few more quests, we gotta go into the forest and we've gotta kill off some wolves. We gotta kill off some ghouls. Uh, there are a number of contacts that we are going to need to be in contact with. One thing I would like to see with the Fiddly Diddly Diablo, like, I, I, I wanna be clear, I'm not being derisive here. I like Fiddly Diddly inventories. I love inventory Tetris. 
It's one of my favorite parts of any video game that actually has a grid-based inventory. I love moving my stuff around. It entertains me endlessly. Some people don't feel that way, but I feel that way. That having been said, I would appreciate it if the game had the ability to sort things. Like there was a button you could click and it would sort everything by type, basically, inside of there. That would be a fantastic utility. Uh, let's head out into the zone because we've got things to do. Make sure the gun's all nice and rap tap bang. Got a few more loogies up in the pipe. And then we will see what the forest has waiting for us. Now, there are still some bugs in this. Obviously, it's a .22 build. Every now and again, the procedural generation of the missions that you're going out to partake in will occasionally, like, bug out, and you'll have to reload your save. The good news there is reloading your save takes all of, like, 10 seconds. And so it's not that big of a deal when it happens. However, this bug did exist the last time we checked the game out in the demo form as well. And so hopefully that'll get resolved. I feel like just drawing attention to it each and every time it comes up will eventually get it fixed. Uh, but by and large, I think that's pretty much one of two bugs that I've seen. Oh good, we're taking the train ride into a gunfight right now. Loverly. Okay. So let's get loot here. Oh, there's some crystals over here. Uh, you can press the G key to throw a bolt a la stalker, if that's the sort of thing that you're into. I think I can sneak in right here and yoink one of these crystals. They're worth a lot of money. People like the crystals. Uh, I think I can yoink this one right here, too. I think each one's worth, like, 400 bucks. And so, like, I don't particularly want to leave them behind. Looks like I can escape from the anomaly zone just by going around right there. Normally, they're not that easy to navigate. Uh, normally, the anomaly zones are actually a little bit more deadly than that. Where are we on the map right now? So, on the map, we're kind of in the northeast area. This right here is a village. It's usually at the center of the map. Everything else is generated by tiles kind of procedurally around it. This right here is the lumber mill that's always somewhere on the map. Over here is probably the old guy that we're supposed to be assassinating and then the little green circles are our extraction zones. Once you're done and you've had your fun in the forest and you've gotten all the loot that you can get your hands on and you're totally overburdened uh, that's where you go to basically evac from the area so that you can take things back and parse them and put them all together turn them into vendors, craft them into other gear, that kind of stuff. It looks like I actually have to go around. Yeah, looks like there's a little spit of mountain that we're going to have to work our way around. Uh, we're going to keep an eye out by holding down right click. You can kind of like look farther off the border of the screen than you would normally be able to. Uh, I find that that's very... Oh, there's boars. There we go. We'll just knock out the boars real fast. Boars can be kind of dangerous, and I'd rather not deal with them. However, in the village, there are ghouls, and we have a quest to kill ten ghouls. So I think I'll probably try to knock some of them off. There's a ghoul right there. I saw him. I done seen him. There we go. We'll drop that ghoul real quick. Are there any more of them out here? There's one right there. There we go. We'll drop him, too. Be careful about going past these barricades into the village down here. Uh, there tend to be like really, really organized, heavily militarized bandits down there that can just be an absolute heartbreaker if you got a lot of loot on you. Oh, that's a lot of bad guys. Okay, yeah, all right, I see you. I see you. You're dead. You got me a little bit. You chewed, I got, I got omnommed a little, you know, un poco omnommed, like a little tiny bit, but like, I think we're gonna be okay. You can't enter all these buildings. They will occasionally have like duffel bags full of loot inside of them. Those cigarettes are worth a ton of money. I also need a drink and a food, so a Coke works really well for that. Don't think I need the bread, but I am going to drink the soda right here. One thing that's nice with the details of this game is whatever you're drinking or eating, that's actually what's inside your character's hand when he goes up to eat or drink it, which is really, really nice. Like, there's no, like, generic eating or drinking animation, basically, uh, for every single object in the game. It actually uses the sprite from a sandwich or from a Coke bottle or from anything else like that whenever you want to consume a beverage or a drink. Uh, it looks like there might be a bad guy over here. Hard to say. Yeah, there's a bandit right there. Got him. Oh my god, okay, there's a guy with a double barrel shotgun waiting on me over there. Oh, he actually, he snuck me right there. He snuck me with the pellets. Get a little reload in. There we go, we dropped him. The good news is I've got really, really good armor. Uh, because I'm further on into the game, I've got some armor over here that does a really, really good job at keeping me secure. And so we can soak a fair bit of damage. However, my armor is going to be breaking pretty shortly, so I'll need to repair that the next time we go to town. i got a Coke right there. I'm going to take the shotgun shells. Uh, I'm not going to use the shotgun shells. 
but the shotgun shells can be broken down into scrap ammo, and then you can use the scrap ammo for other activities. I am going to drink this Coke right here, hopefully get my meters all nice and green. Perfect. Everything is green. The caffeine gave us a little bit of a pick-me-up. Honestly, I've been giving up caffeine lately. So, like, I've got, like, a shameful addiction that I need to admit to all of you here on the internet. Uh, I drink an absolutely ludicrous... He had hollow point rounds? Okay. Uh, I drink an absolutely ludicrous amount of Diet Pepsi. All right? Like, I usually go through, like, a 24 box, like, every five days or so. Five to six days. And so, like, about two or three months ago, I was thinking to myself, like, maybe I should stop doing that. Like, you know, this is not really moderation, and I've been doing it now since I was, like, 19 and moved out of my parents' house. So maybe it's time to relax a little bit. Like, I do feel jittery, and I do generally feel jumpy, like, most of the time. Like, over-caffeinated, you feel me? And so anyways, I was like, maybe I'll do something about that. And I've been cutting back a lot. And honestly, uh... Not having the caffeine fire in my veins all day, every day. Nice little level up right there. We leveled up our style. We've come more we've become more stylish. Basically, we're Billy D. Williams at this point. Uh, but anyways, the lack of caffeine was rough for like the first week or two. But honestly, like once you get over that hump, I've been doing a pretty good job of keeping it to like maybe one Diet Pepsi a day. I've been doing like a fairly solid job at it. Fairly proud of myself. Normally, I'm not great on follow through. What was that noise? Uh, I don't know what that noise is. Ooh. I don't know. I thought maybe there was something like invisible creeping around. Like, this game is inspired by Stalker. I feel like it's not completely and totally unfounded that there might be, you know, invisible enemies. I va am I wrong about that? I, like, vaguely remember there being invisible enemies in Stalker. Like, when you got down into some of the late-game bunkers and whatnot. Like, where they get all hyped and crazy. Uh, we need to be really careful over here. Uh, because this is the opening where the organized bandits with, like, the actual bandit boss might be. But anyways, I don't know if our hunt is concluded so far on ghouls. Let me check my journal real fast. Uh, so we needed to kill some ghouls. I need one more ghoul. And after that, we gotta go wolf hunting. Ghoulies! Oop, there's wolves right there. We can actually sort that out right this second. Oh, somebody else is shooting. Who's shooting? Oh, green army guy. Okay, he's friendly. He's on our side. Fair enough. Uh, this game is single player. There is no multiplayer as of right now. So if you're looking to play this game with a group of friends, uh, that's not a thing. And I don't know if it's intended or planned. However, I did go ahead and stream the game for like three or four hours the other day just to prep for this video. And like, there were a lot of people requesting multiplayer. Like, not even like, not even like mass multiplayer. Oh, that hurts so much. Okay, we're going to need to fall back. I'm going to use a bandage real fast. There are different med kits that do different things. We caught a bleed right there from that Mosin shot. Uh, Mosin fires a real, real big bullet. Uh, the Mosin is basically like a cannon. Uh, it, it's, it's, it's a gun that hurts, uh, so don't get shot by it if you can help it. I feel like that's reasonably decent advice for most situations is don't get shot. Uh, but in this case, it's just that much more important because he has a big boom boom gun. Uh, that's horrifically painful when it hits me. Uh, it looks like we've got a weapon box over here, so that's got a bunch of scrap ammo and just random bullets laying around inside of it. I don't see any other bandits over here. It looks like they got overrun by ghouls. Yeah, there is infighting on the maps. That's actually one of the things that I really like about this game, is that the various factions, they do and will beef with one another, like, on the map when they run into each other. Like, if the green army runs into stalkers, they will definitely start fighting with those stalkers. If the stalkers run into bandits, they will fight with the bandits. When the bandits run into ghouls and whatnot, they will fight with the ghouls. Uh, it's one of those little immersive things that I think really, really elevates a game, and I feel like it's a feature of gaming that I have really personally liked since the days of Doom where, you know, like a, a baron of hell will accidentally hit a bunch of imps and it'll kick off like an internal gang war between all of them, basically. I've always found that to be like an, a really, really appealing feature in games to make the world feel alive and make it kind of pop a little bit harder. I don't think we got enough wolves and we still need another ghoul. So let me see if I can find... Uh, nope, 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 ow! That hurt so much, run. Uh, that guy is very, very, very dangerous. Uh, that guy is a stalker. Uh, and so basically, he's not allied with anybody. 
He's just a pissed off guy in the middle of the woods with a giant weapon. That SA-98 or whatever. Uh, it's gonna hurt. It's gonna sting a little bit. It's gonna put a little bit of the pain on you. And so we don't want to beef with him because he's playing the same game we're playing. I.e. the range game. Uh, the only difference is his range game is way stronger than ours. Like, he's only got to land two hits to kill me. I've got to land, like, eight hits to kill him. Fitness level up right there, too. Uh, this game has a pretty simple level up system. As you use skills, you get better at them. So you get better at looting by looting. You get better at shooting by shooting. You get better at running by running. So on and so forth. And then when you max out a skill tree, actually what I like is there's a bit of a new game. There's kind of a... Uh, an alternate advancement system in the game, I guess. If you ever played EverQuest or anything else like that, uh, once you max out a skill tree... Hold on. There's a bandit smoking right back behind there. Uh, but anyways, once you max out a skill tree, you actually get to pick a specialization, and then that specialization begins leveling up from minimum to max while keeping the bonuses of the previous uh, tree. And so anyways... Good stuff right there. I really, really like that. It virtually guarantees you're going to have a lot of stuff to work on. And honestly, within the confines of what is effectively kind of a closed alpha right now, uh, that's the stuff that I like to see that promises a big future for a game. While I was streaming the game, I did find that a lot of people were sort of just like, man, they really, really borrowed from Tarkov with this. And like, honestly, I feel like that's okay. Now, hear me out here. Uh, Escape from Tarkov, Nikita, and the developers, they've basically said that there's, like, no chance that they're ever going to put a single-player branch into the game. At least the last time I played the game. I haven't played in a year or two. I started playing in probably, like, I don't know, 2017, 2018, and played for a long time, and then finally fell off with Tarkov because some of the managerial decisions. Uh, but anyways, if you're going to say that you're not going to make a single-player branch when it's highly in demand... You're kind of begging for somebody else to come along and like swoop that out from underneath you with a game that's got like a different name and like a different aesthetic, but like a similar gameplay idea, you know what I mean? And so like it honestly doesn't bother me that much. But then again, I feel like I'm sort of the target audience for this game too. Like people that are kind of burned out on Tarkov Live and which just very much like to play a very in-depth single player Tarkov. There's a few more fire crystals over here. Oh my god. Okay, yeah, there's flame vents everywhere. Uh, we walked right into the middle of an anomaly field, and that's not good. Let's go ahead, and I need to drink, and I need to eat. So we're just going to do that in the middle of the fire fields right here. I call this a little scenic lunch break. And so I've ate an entire block of cheese right there. I'm sure that's going to come out pleasant later. And then there are two crystals in there, and if we were feeling particularly, you know, breaky about the cheeky, I think we could try to sneak on in there and grab them, but I'm not convinced... We're very safe right now. Like, I think the angle that they want you to come in on that one is from the right. Oh, there's wolves down here. Hold on. One. Two. There's a... That one's sleeping. Okay, I thought he was dead. Uh, he's not dead. He's just taking a little wolfy poo nap. Apparently, it's been a rough day of wolfing. There we go. We got both of them down there. Uh, that should have worked on our quests a little bit, I think. That should have got us a little bit closer to completion. Uh, so when your bar goes dark gray like that, that's wounds. Uh, so basically there's injuries and there's wounds. Uh, when your health goes down and it stays light gray, you can heal that off with a med kit. However, repeatedly taking damage or taking like a big spurt of damage uh, gives you a really strong chance of getting wounded, which means you can really only sleep that off. Or you can go to the medical center inside the base. And you could pay money to have those healed off. There's also certain medical kits that take a really, really, really long time. But they will heal off your wounds as well as generally healing off your... Or healing back your HP. And so, you gotta kind of pick the right tool for the job. For right now, what time is it? It is 2 in the afternoon. We probably almost 3 in the afternoon. We probably have time... Oop, there's a bandit lair down here. I don't know if I should knock it over. Let me heal up real quick. There we go. We'll just med kit it up for a second. And let me put those ones back into the slot so that we're ready to rock. And we kind of just want to keep an eye out on this place because if they see us, they're going to start bombing shots on us. Uh, they do have somebody with a, a very, very large sniper rifle. I think I got him, though. I think I, I, think I snaked the shot in between the barricades. I think. 
But that gun's capable of more or less like one tapping us, even through our super awesome armor. Uh, there's actually a dead bandit right here. Oh, never mind. This is the guy that had the SV98. Yeah, did I say SA98 last time? SV98. I don't know why, dude. All the gun designations. I always get the SVD and the SA or the. I always get the SVD and the. Uh, SV-98 mixed up for some reason. Even though they look completely and totally distinct to one another, I still mess it up frequently. Uh, we do need to ditch some weight here. We're carrying too much stuff. We're over our weight allotment, which is going to make us move real, real slow. Oh, yeah, there is another bandit here. I guess he got looted, though. Fair enough. Uh, there is a weapon box over here. We might be able to get something decent out of here. Just a bunch of scrap ammo, but that's okay. I've got a quest to bring home a ton of scrap ammo, so I don't really mind that. Uh, we've also got a medical box right here, and I always try to raid these whenever I can uh, because meds are really expensive in this game. Like, it, it, it's going to cost you some ducats in order to get your medical supplies all nice and lined up. Uh, there is an airdrop coming in. That's why you hear the sound of an airplane. Uh, it sounds like Travis Air Force Base out here. Uh, that's because there's an airdrop coming in. It'll get marked on the map. I think that's it right there. Uh, be forewarned, though, the airdrops are very, very, very heavily guarded by bandits. Uh, by spawn, I think they always get there first, and there's not really a whole lot you can do about it. But if you can kill them all and survive the lead storm that awaits you at that location, uh, there are some very, very particular goodies inside of there that you might enjoy having. We're almost at the evac point here. There we go. Let's get on out of here. Perfect. A successful infiltration. The game does have day and night patterns. It does have weather patterns. There are things like uh, fog. There's rain. Uh, I think there's one that's sort of like a forest fire where everything gets very smoky and everything has kind of like a, you know, like the color filter they put on Breaking Bad? Like the entire level will kind of have that color filter put over the top of it. Uh, but anyways, we survive. So we get a little bit of XP and this levels up our character. Now your character has attributes. And your character, well, your character has skills and your character has a general level. Uh, the general level is going to unlock missions and gear that you can equip, uh, whereas the, the general skills that you're using just make you better while on away team missions. I'm going to get on in here and I'm going to sell off some of our goodies. Unfortunately, we're slow boating it a little bit. We got uh, a big old brick of lead in our britches right now, which is fair. If I had just spent the day with ghouls trying to claw my, you know, dong off and a bunch of people firing high-powered rifles at me and then also almost getting eaten by wolf packs like Liam Neeson, I'd probably have lead bricks in my shorts too. Uh, I'm not going to sugarcoat that. Yeah, those are worth 400 bucks a pop. Not too bad. There we go. Get a little bit of cash money out of that. Uh, he's tapped out. The vendors restock, I think, every single day at 7 in the morning. So for right now, they're not going to be that helpful to us. Uh, but anyways, I think I've already cleared these guys out. So let me take a little stroll around the base and figure out if there's anywhere I can unload some of this equipment. Uh, especially this guy right here. Although I should probably... Do I need to... He's got the cheek pad on there. He's got himself a little optic. I think that's actually an aftermarket magazine right there too. But I'm not sure. I don't remember if the... Uh the SV-98 has an internal magazine or not, or if it actually has a detachable mag. I don't know. Uh, can I sell you stuff? Would you like to buy this super awesome gun? Yeah, 4,000 rubles right there. I'll take it. I'll also sell you all these thumb drives because I don't really care about them. They're not that helpful to me. And this is really the rotation of the game. Is you go into the zone, you find stuff, you loot the things that you need to build up your base over here. So actually, that's what I can do. I can show you my base over on this side. Let's go take a look at the base real fast. And like, I've got my workbench, I've got my storage. This is an ammo bench right here. It basically spits out scrap ammo like every eight hours or so. Uh, so that you basically have a replenishing supply of scrap ammo. It was the first thing that I built. Unfortunately, I don't have any ammo crafting skills. Uh, inside your skill list, you will see... That's not the skill list. The skill list is over here. Uh, I don't have any gunsmithing skills, so I can't manufacture my own ammo or anything right now. What I can do is cook. I took a cooking book as a quest reward, and so I can make sandwiches, and I can make steakies, and I can make hot dogs and sausages and stuff, but I need to build a kitchen first, and I'm kind of accumulating the stuff for the kitchen. Uh, I need a few more 
forks. I need more cutlery, basically. I need a little bit more, I need a few more nuts, and then I need some, like, knives and spoons and forks and things. And I think one more pot, and then I'll be able to build my kitchen. But for right now, I can't build my kitchen. These modules also come in, like, secondary tiers. I don't know how many of them have been implemented as of right now. But there are, like, secondary tiers intended. Right now, there's just, like, the tier 2 storage. But I'm thinking maybe later on there might be more of them. Uh, I think I need to... I think I need an armor repair kit real fast. Yeah. I've got this armor repair kit right here. And so it will... Yeah, let's do this. It's giving us, like, a little bit of durability. It brought us back up to 65% on our armor, though, so that's nothing to, like, shake your finger at. Like, it's fine. Let me do some quick inventory management here, and then we'll get back out in the field for some more adventures. It's 5 o'clock. We may have time to get another adventure in. I'm gonna go for it. Like, worst case scenario is that you guys get to see the night cycle, and I get catastrophically annihilated by beings of the night that float around with gnashing teeth and glowing eyes. But, you know... The best thing that happens is we get a lot richer, and that's always, like, an appealing option. Alright, so we're inside the zone. We still need to get ourselves a couple more wolves, and we still need to get ourselves a couple more ghouls. But I have faith. I see you. There was another one right there, too. I think I got them all. I think I got them all. This is the problem, is I get out here into the field... And, like, I find way too much loot before I even get to my destination. Oh, yeah, a little scorpion right there. Okay. I'll take the ammo. I don't really want the scorpion. It's not really worth anything. Hydrogen peroxide. I don't know if I need that. There we go. A few more meds. Like the sound of that. Some white paint. Okay. I think we can loot these file cabinets, too. Hey, there's some spoons. All right, so we got enough spoons to build our kitchen now. Very nice. What else you got for me? More spoons. Uh, we've got the key to the first storage room of the oil factory. Never seen that item before. That must be new. I guess I'll take the rest of the spoons because I'm not particularly sure how many I was going to need. Uh, we should probably also loot this dead guy over here. What do you have? Big old box of pasta. He's been eating it like potato chips, just straight out of the box, munching and crunching. Uh, he had a Mosin, so it's a good thing we dropped him. Otherwise, he could have been a considerable liability. All right. Oh, no. I've run out of ammo? Have I now? Okay. Uh, we'll swap over to the steel core rounds then. I've been using hollow point bullets because they're better for hunting like uh, ghouls and things that don't have armor. If you don't know what a hollow point bullet is, this game basically has different ammo types and different ammo types have different jobs. Uh, there we go, a couple more wolves down. Uh, but anyways, hollow point bullets, they mushroom. They fold backwards when they hit something uh, so that it creates like a blowback basically from the internal force and like the material spreading around the head of the bullet, basically. And so anyways, uh, hollow point rounds are quite good for killing people that don't have armor. However, the problem with hollow point rounds is that they fold back when they hit a bullet vest too, which means they don't really have a great chance of penetrating. Uh, that ghoul's already dead. Though I know not who done killed him. I know not who done killed him. All right, uh, we've got a hammer in here. We've got some pliers. We've got some scrap and some nails. I'll just take the nuts for right now. We've got a drill right there. I don't know if I need a drill, but I will take a drill. Just on the odd off chance that it ends up being relative to my general contracting business. There's a rope right there, and I know I don't have any of those. And I'm sure that's going to come up at some point, and then I'm going to scratch my head and be like, oh, I don't know where to get a rope from. There's another pot. We definitely needed that for our kitchen. So other than that, I think we just need scrap food. And then I think we should be good to make our kitchen module, I think. There's a fork. Definitely need that. Wrench and two knives. Dude, I'm actually kind of... Let's loop back around and see if we can hit a few more of these houses. If I can get out of here and actually be able to make my kitchen like live and on camera, I think that'll be just fine, fine. Fine, just fine. There's another fork. 
I don't remember particularly how many I had or how many I needed, so I'm just going to take all of them. Anything inside this house right here? No. Okay. Somebody's walking around. I hear him clompy stomping off to the left. I actually think they're been... Oh, nope, there he is. Scared me a little bit. There we go. Ghouls are down. Uh, nothing in here. Let's take it on up to this northmost building. Nothing in there. Okay. Uh, duffel bag in here. That sounds good. I can go through a duffel. Oh, big old bottle of wine. Okay. I'll take a big old bottle of wine. I don't mind. That sounds just fine. It may, in fact, be exactly what I had in mind. But I already used mind as part of this rhyme, so unfortunately, that's it. The rhymes are no longer sublime. Uh, let's go ahead and cut over to the left. We'll kill who we can over here. Perfect. There's another one back in over there. I saw him trying to hide from me. How are we doing on ammo right now? I have a tendency, like, I drink bullets when I play this game. Yeah, we've already gone through 50 rounds, so... We're going to need to resupply a little bit when we get back to town. Don't think I have any spark plugs, so I'll pick those up. I don't necessarily think that I need alcohol for right now. I mean, I would totally take the alcohol if I was in this situation for, like, dressing wounds and whatnot. But, like, hey, a pillow. I can use that to build a bed. I'll take it. We also got a soda right there. A little flash drive. I'm going to drink the soda real fast, see how that treats my meters. Good. Uh, back up on top. Feeling better. Little duffel bag over here. A little bit of water in there. I'll take it. Some vodka. Do I want the vodka? I'll take the vodka. I feel like that sort of thing is always good for trading. Oh. Okay. Somebody's busting off mad shots. Suppressing fire! Uh, go ahead and, yeah, med kit on up and hope they don't rush me because I need to reload. If they do rush me, I'm dead right here. Uh, they're pushing up on me. Hold on. I gotta fall back to a corner. I can hear them walking. There's an enemy right there, too, and I'd rather not deal with him either. Got that one. Fall back a little bit further. Use another med kit to get rid of yet another bleed. I don't even, I don't even know why I'm fighting these guys. I physically don't even have the inventory space to pick up their loot. Why am I doing this? I don't know. I just do things. Alright, so it looks like stalkers ran into a bunch of elite bandits over here. Uh, I do want the ammo. I will take it. Uh, that's actually armor-piercing rounds. Those are BP rounds right there. You can tell because the black tips. I think the general nomenclature is that a black tip means armor-piercing. A red tip is a tracer, if I remember correctly. I think there's a few other colors, too, that they paint them. There's a chocolate. Chocolate's worth a whole bunch in this game. I do want all of your ammo, please. Any bullets you can possibly give my way, I'll take. I need red cigarettes for a quest. Is there anybody else in here? Can I loot this body safely? Probably not. I just want the ammo, dude. I don't even care about the rest of it. I'm just getting greedy about ammo. Oh, this is Laser himself. This is a named bandit boss right here that we done killed. Nice. Okay, well, bequeath upon me the loot. Uh, he had an AS Val, actually. Oop, there's a stalker over here. I need him to die. I'm also bleeding heavily, so let's go ahead and rub that. Yeah, let's go ahead and we'll, we'll buff that off real quick. There we go. Uh, I think that was the last of my bandages, though, so if we get a bleed from here, I think... Oh, no, I got three more. Never mind. I was just being nervous. Uh, we're going to have to do some inventory management here because I do want that AS Val. Uh, the AS Val is far and away one of my most favoritest guns. I think it's awesome. Such a cool firearm, dude. The VSS and the AS Val, dude, just gorgeous firearms. Uh, they're subsonic, fully auto marksman's rifles, basically. 
Uh, and the reason why, you might be saying to yourself, like, why does it matter that the gun is subsonic? When a bullet goes by somebody, it makes a snapping noise. Um, if you have a subsonic round, it doesn't do that, which makes this a pretty particularly terrifying weapon for, like, assassination and dealing with targets quietly. Uh, it makes it actually a pretty, basically a war crime of a firearm. <laughs> Alright, so we got all the loot from over here. We do want to check both these dead stalkers over here. They might have something worthwhile on them. Uh, he did. He had a silver wrist chain right there, a silver tennis bracelet. That's worth a bunch of money. He's also got a med kit, and he's got a bunch of ammo for our gun in particular. And anything that gives me one more reload in this hellish life out in the middle of nowhere is okay by me. Uh, we're pretty much maxed out on our storage, but that key that we got from Laser, it allows us to get in here. And it allows us to open up a storage crate that's inside this room. Yeah. And so there's the loot trove. We got gun attachments. We got good stuff inside of here. Um, I'm not going to be able to carry most of it. In fact, I'm going to ditch the drill right now because these attachments are just worth a huge amount of money. We got AR-15 bits around here. We've got a 545 suppressor for like a 74U. We've got a foregrip right there. That's spicy. I'll take all those. Uh, we do have a modified AR-15 stock right there, like some kind of Daniel Defense looking thing. Inside the safe, we have watches and a huge grip of cash and apparently some perfume. Probably be useful and tradable. What do we have in here? A little bit more money. Another silver bracelet. Okay. Lots of meds inside of here, too. I'd like to take the lot of it, but I can't promise it's going to work out like that. We're pretty full up right now. I think there's more loot back here, too. Yeah, there's filing cabinets. And I need, like, forks and things. Uh, we got a knife right there. I'll take that. Basically, I'm going to overload myself real quick, and then we'll just decide what we want to keep and what we want to get rid of. I definitely need more knives, but forks are what I need more than anything else. So if I get some forks in here, that'd be great. No forks. Feels bad. Is there anything down in here? There's a duffel bag. And so this right here would be the benefit of killing the boss, is that you get access to just an absolute meteoric, huge Phoenix Rising grip of, you know, goodies. Uh, whenever you find the boss. Uh, but I think it's time for us to get on out of here. We're losing our sunlight. I think heading north out of the village is probably the best way to get out of here to get to evac. But let's see if we make it. We got some quests done. We had a pretty productive day in the field. Uh, we're basically out of time for the day. I cut it a little bit longer because I just find myself losing track of time when I play this game. But anyways, this is Zero Sievert. I hope you guys enjoyed your stay. I think that this game is very promising, and I'm highly looking forward to it. I appreciate you guys giving me the luxury of your time. I'll be back tomorrow, but up until then, it's time for me to go. Goodbye, everybody.